Aston Martin is currently far from the team it was at the start of last year and at the Silverstone-based outfit struggles to get into points each race despite being branded as the fifth best team after pre-season testing. The new contract Fernando Alonso signed, however, shows that the Spaniard is confident that the team can move forward with him as the leading driver. But what exactly happened to the team at the start of 2024? Aston Martin has maintained its position as the fifth contender in the 2024 F1 season, both in terms of race performance and results, currently trailing fourth place Mercedes by 22 points following the recent Miami Grand Prix. Although the team has faced challenges in matching the pace of Ferrari and McLaren during races, their qualifying sessions have shown a different story. Led by two-time world champion Fernando Alonso, the AMR24 has consistently secured positions on the second or third row of the grid in four out of five races, only to struggle during the actual race events. However, in Miami, Alonso faced difficult difficulties even in the qualifying session, finishing at P15 while his teammate Stroll outperformed him at P11. Alonso managed to improve his position during the Sunday race, finishing at P9 while Lando Norris secured his first victory. Aston Martin capitalised well on the safety car to make a cheap pit stop for medium compound tyres. However, Alonso has higher ambitions. So, despite a points finish in Miami, he's shouldering the blame for the overall underwhelming output. We have to improve. I haven't had a great weekend on my part. In the two qualifyings, I haven't managed to get a good lap and that has compromised the starts and the race. And then, as a team, we haven't achieved the setup. It was not in that window in which it operates in perfect conditions. If we had had one more training practice, we would have made some changes and we would have more ideas, Alonso said. This confusing scenario needs attention according to the number 14 driver as Aston Martin is nowhere close to fighting for podiums. Additionally, this shoddy output was consistent throughout the weekend in all sessions, especially qualifying. This is exactly what Alonso regretted about his Miami performance. It's also worth mentioning that for the first time in 2024, Alonso failed to make it to Q3. This scenario highlighted the team's woes in Miami. The opening lap sprint race ruining collision with his teammate put him at risk for the upcoming Grand Prix qualifying. However, despite sustaining no serious damage, the team opted for a setup change. This change resulted in the two-time champion doing worse than the sprint qualifying session. But the Miami qualifying issues were not the first of the Aston Martin problems this year because the situation at Silverstone has worsened significantly since last year and although making conclusions from pre-season testing is never easy, the consensus in late February was that Aston Martin was the fourth or fifth fastest team. Six rounds later, this assessment seems accurate of the AMR24 as Fernando Alonso has occasionally given the Ferrari and McLaren duo something to worry about. But Aston's race pace is a limiting factor and despite last year's incredible jump over winter, the team faces a harsh reality in 2024. Of course, it would be a stretch to suggest the situation at Aston Martin is disastrous as they are still a top five team and more upgrades will be introduced at the Imola GP. In this sense, Mike Crack's team have stopped the bleed after spending the second half of last year going backwards. Regrettably, this more charitable perspective does not erase their shortcomings and at this stage 12 months ago Aston Martin was the second fastest team, occasionally even lapping McLaren. Ferrari was grappling with extreme tyre degradation while Mercedes was forced to return to the drawing board after the first round. Under these circumstances, Aston Martin found itself in an advantageous position to secure a leading position. Regrettably, Fernando Alonso and Lance Stroll failed to capitalise on that opportunity. Despite Dan Fallow's assertions during the winter that the team had learned from past errors, it appears evident that Aston Martin has lost value ground and after devoting nearly six months to rectifying their mistakes they slipped to fifth place in terms of speed in 2023. This ranking has persisted with McLaren and Ferrari demonstrating much more promising progressions. 
McLaren demonstrated significant improvements in aerodynamics just last weekend in Miami. The MCL38 displayed enhanced competitiveness on straightaways, addressing one of the major weaknesses of the Woking team. Ironically, Aston Martin has acquired an undesirable trait that they'd managed to avoid last season. Observers first noted Aston's upward trajectory in the pre-season of 2023 when the AMR23 exhibited exceptional tyre management during race simulations. This attribute, coupled with its raw performance, proved formidable. This season, the team from Silverstone frequently encounters a significant decline in performance from qualifying to race day. Moreover, their single lap pace is not particularly impressive as demonstrated in Miami. And while the unique surface of the Florida circuit may have played a role, such explanations can only suffice for a limited time. Aston Martin failed to capitalize on the opportunity presented last Last year to establish themselves as consistent front runners and challenge Red Bull, who, despite their excellence, appear to have experienced diminishing returns over the past 12 months. But not all is doom and gloom in Silverstone, and Aston Martin has important updates planned for Imola, which Alonso describes as essential for the team's 2024 season. And despite introducing upgrades in Japan, it's clear they have been comprehensively outdeveloped by their rivals. Moving forward, Alonso is hopeful upgrades can rectify the situation. At this point last year, Lawrence Stroll's team posed as the primary contender to Red Bull. Fernando Alonso regularly secured podium finishes. However, their much anticipated upgrades in Canada ended up backfiring, worsening the car's performance and pushing it beyond its optimal operating range. This setback initiated a downward spiral for Aston Martin with the team dedicating most of the season to rectifying their own errors. With McLaren getting their first victory and alongside Ferrari, they will introduce a major upgrade package in Imola. Aston Martin must respond. Unlike last season, their immediate rivals do not have to address fundamental issues with their concept. Mid-season development will only intensify, so Mike Crack's technical team must keep up. Speaking after his P9 finish in Miami, Alonso explained the team's plan for the short term. There will be upgrades. We have faltered in the last three races, Japan, China and Miami. AS.com quotes him as saying, They've all been similar in my opinion, but the good qualifying sessions put us in the lead groups. Then we go backwards. On pure pace in the race, we have taken a step backwards in the last three races and that's what we're going to try and improve. At this point in the season, there's no room for trial and error because replicating the mistakes of the previous year would severely jeopardise Aston's ability to compete at the forefront in the foreseeable future. Undoubtedly, the AMR24 holds promise because Alonso's qualifying performances this season have been commendable, despite a recent dip in form witnessed last weekend in Florida. Nevertheless, Aston Martin remains within striking distance of the leading teams. Their current objective is to match the swift progress demonstrated by their competitors over the past year. The upcoming round at Imola will serve as their initial test in this endeavour. What I believe Aston Martin should prioritise is the introduction of more impactful upgrades that yield substantial performance gains and thus far such improvements have been lacking. The upgrades rolled out last season following an impressive debut seemed more like a lateral move. This trend has persisted into this year where they've managed to maintain pace with their rivals but have failed to significantly improve their position relative to the competition. In contrast, both Ferrari and McLaren have made notable strides since 2023 and while Aston Martin has made substantial investments in infrastructure, which is commendable, they still operate as a smaller team with limited facilities. Therefore, they must ensure that they maximise the potential of every resource at their disposal, including the upgrades they introduce to the track in order to achieve tangible progress. Such progress must not be achieved, however, with complaining about nationality bias from Alonso towards the FIA, but Aston Martin must own up and improve, which is something I'm certain the team will do. Lawrence Stroll's ambition is clear, and while he may not sell the team right away, he is definitely still in charge, and it's his word that will be the final thing that will either bury the Silverstone outfit or raise them back up high again.
Do you think Aston Martin can bounce back and actually be a contender for podiums this year? Let us know down in the comments below. We'll see you very soon in the next video.